interpreted. Um, all right, we've got recording in progress. So uh, let's call to order the uh, uh, December 20, uh, 2022 meeting of the uh, Green Bay Housing Authority. Um, roll call we have, uh, I think virtually, and uh, probably has it. Um, so we'll move to item C, and that is approval of the agenda. So you all have the agenda before you. Are there any additions or corrections or modifications? Hearing none, then I would entertain a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Her, I'll second. <laughs> Mike, I'm second. All right, so we've got a motion and multiple seconds. Um, uh, any, um, any questions? Otherwise, all in favor of approval of the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Agenda is approved. Moving on to item D, that would be uh, the minutes from the October 20, uh, 2022 uh, meeting of the Housing Authority that was in your pack. Are there any corrections or modifications? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. Let's do this, Terry. Motion. <laughs> I'll make the motion. <laughs> Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor of approval of the minutes from the October 20, 2022 meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Then we will move on to item E, regular business. And that is, uh, we've got one item and that is consideration with possible action on approval of a memorandum of understanding and seller's note letter with Gorman and Company for the redevelopment of Mason Manor and 41 scattered sites of affordable housing. So I want to join those who is with us. She has joined us um, for the meeting. So. Everyone's here, which is great. Um, and uh, after years of work and a lot of work on a lot of people's parts, where we can sign a memorandum of understanding with our developers for the redevelopment of this project. So we created this GBH Properties One Inc. body. We set them up at the site units and they manage those. I was very so um Mr. Manor. This is a very complicated project. It has a lot involved specifically with financing, ownership. Um, your goal is to uh, make the application for WIDA tax credits and historic tax credits to assist us in the development of this project. And we have um, for Paul and Ted's purposes and Kayla and set up. GBHA meets first and the GBHA property meets after that. And they have the same agenda item on for approvals. So I don't know, um, Paul or Ted, um, which one of you, if you would like to walk us through this memorandum of understanding and kind of lay out the terms for what we're looking sure. at in order to get this project. I think we have to open the floor. Yeah. Motion open the floor. I'll, I'll make that motion. <laughs> and there's second. A, a second. Is anybody else having connectivity trouble? Or right, is it... We have a motion and a second. Yes. So all in favor of opening the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, I am. I'm floating in and out here. So me too. I'm not sure what me the too. problem is. Uh, I suspect it's on Zoom's end. I heard about every one of three words Cheryl was saying, but it all sounded really great. <laughs> I've asked the floor is open um, I'm not sure if Paul or Ted <clears throat> which one of you would like to maybe walk us through this memorandum of understanding sure you know Cheryl what I was thinking is maybe and I apologize I'm not on video but my my um, I've got the sun streaming in the window here it doesn't look great so I'm just going to keep myself off you guys kind of probably know what I look like um but uh, I thought I would go, Cheryl, kind of on a um, 
maybe a little little closer to the 50,000 foot view macro type of explanation of what we're trying to do. And then Paul can maybe fill in the blanks if he wants. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Okay, good. So um, the intent um, that we are trying to follow with this MOU was always consistent with the RFP that we had responded to. And the RFP that we responded to envisioned, um, and this is, this is a, uh, a, a, a structure that we emulated uh, from what we did with the Wausau Housing Authority uh, on one of their towers. <clears throat> and it seemed like it worked pretty well for both parties. And that is um, a 51, it's really a 50-50 partnership. We technically would have a 51% ownership interest in the entity. The housing authority would have a 49%. Um, if you're a housing authority board member, you get nervous at that because you're like, hey, this is our asset. Why is Gorman at 51%? And the reason is because part of the financing structure of this project utilizes uh, the actual asset, Mason Manor and the scattered sites and donates it into the project uh, at a very high um, dollar amount, which um, off, actually off the top of my head, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's, it's a, probably a $9 million number, something like that. That is a seller note that the Green Bay Housing Authority will give to the project. What that does is allow us to drive tax credits off of that amount. And that gives us free money, free equity, it's called, when we sell those tax credits. So the reason that we have to be 51% versus the Green Bay Housing Authority at 49 is there are conflict of interest rules that require um, a third party to be in control of that partnership. So we're 51 and then the Green Bay Housing Authority is 49. What's nice about the seller note is um, there are many, many, and Paul can go through this, probably more appropriate for Paul to, to reassure assure you that you have control over the asset. Um, but there are num numerous things that the Green Bay Housing Authority will retain in terms of control over that asset. So it's not uh, flailing out in space uh, with a third party, but the structure of the entire deal, it's important. This 5149 uh, is a managing member interest and uh, hold on to your seats. Um, the, it is a 0.01% interest in the LLC we are forming. The tax credit investor uh, who actually buys the tax credit and gives us the proceeds to do the project, they will be 99.99% based on IRS law. However, the housing authority in Gorman will have all management control. And then I'll explain the guarantees in a little bit, but we will have control of the project, but the investor per IRS tax law will have a 99.99% ownership. So, um, you know, as a board member, you're asking yourself, geez, kind of a scary deal because we're putting our asset out there for the world. Uh, but there are, we've, you know, this has been done very many times before, uh, not reinventing the wheel. And uh, there are mechanisms that the Green Bay Housing Authority can retain control of that asset. Um, it, within the 5149, the idea is that Gorman, who is really leading the architectural design and I would say instead of property management, I'm going to say compliance um, angle of this project. We will make guarantees associated with all of those responsibilities in full that will protect the Green Bay Housing Authority from that. Um, but then we will, once we're completed with the project, we have leased up. You know, we, there might be some slight relocation. We're hoping no. Uh, based on the when we close this project, which will probably be in fall of this year, uh, sorry, of 2023. Um, once we close the deal, hopefully we will be able to start construction uh, right away without a relocation. And then uh, once we um, uh, move people uh, so that we can start with the top two floors and work down, um, 
we will, Gorman will be responsible for all of those logistics. Gorman will be responsible for guarantee all of the construction and the budget. And Gorman will be responsible for all the design. So any compliments we'll take, any uh, bad things we'll eat, you know, and, and solve. So we're, it's kind of the, the, the buck stops here, which is, which is nice because we've done this many times before in all of those roles uh, and have been successful. So um, about, I'd say um, six months after we complete, might be a little sooner than that, but let's just say six months after we complete the project, which will be approximately a year and a half, 18 months. Uh, we will then go to what's called perm financing. Perm financing is when we are stabilized, the project is complete, all the tenants are in place, and we have achieved a um, financial stabilization in terms of the ratio between our income and our debt. That ratio is 1.15. Once we have created more income than debt equal to 1.15 ratio, we can then turn to perm financing. All of the financing will be WIDA, which will be nice. It'll be a nice, nice transition from construction financing and WIDA to perm financing and WIDA. And then um, once we have completed that 90 day at 1.15, it's called a debt coverage ratio. Uh, we will hand over the keys to yours truly, Cheryl and Jamie and the Housing Authority. They will then be your manager. Um, the only wild card in that will be, in my mind, they'll have to get certified for WIDA. I think all of that will be very easy for them because they know exactly what they're doing. But there is a compliance aspect of that in Section 42 that the investor has to be comfortable that Cheryl and Jamie and the Green Bay Housing Authority know how to run a Section 42 program. They may put on uh, Cheryl and Jamie um, a requirement that Gorman oversees or a third party oversees the compliance for a certain amount of years, which may eat into your property management fee, but should be able to be covered by the project. Um, so, uh, once again, it's about an 18 month, uh, construction, uh, period. And then there'll be probably a six month settling in, and then we'll have a, a perm probably six months after that. Uh, so, you know, you're talking about a 24 month, uh, period from start to finish. That's my macro description, Cheryl. I don't know if Paul wants to add anything. You know what, Ted, who <clears throat> explain who will own the property and for how long? Yeah. So we will create an LLC, a new LLC. Uh, once again, it'll be Gorman 51%. The um, uh, housing authority will be 49% at a 0.01% ownership interest. Then the tax credit entity will own 99.99% of that new LLC. Um, this structure will be in place for 15 years, which is the tax credit compliance period. After the tax credit compliance period, the, um, the, the Green Bay Housing Authority will be able to, as the nonprofit, uh, opt to um, get the investor, the tax credit investor out. There will be a very, very nominal put price, which means that they can... Um, they can take over the entire entity by paying the investor very, very small nominal amount. And um, they will be 100% owner. And in be between that, what will happen is the Green Bay Housing Authority will have a ground lease. They'll have a seller note. They'll have a developer fee that we're, we're, we, are, um, th we are sharing the developer fee 50-50 because we are out at stabilization. We'll get our 50% fee at that time. And then the housing authority will take their 50% developer fee over the 15 years with the cash flow. They may get some at, 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 at that perm as well. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. There you go. Yep. It on how much is deferred of that fee, which is a concept of you have a developer fee that you get a close, uh, sorry, a developer fee that you get for the project. 
how much is deferred is based on how much gap you need to balance your sources and uses. So if you have a $2 million developer fee and we each get a million, uh, very, very typically, you would have $500,000 of that $2 million fee deferred. So there would be 1.5 million that would be um, owed uh, to the parties, you know, kind of at closing. It wouldn't be a closing. It's in different, like, closing, completion, perm. There's all these installation. But the 500000 would be um, – in the next 15 years after stabilization, you get that through cash flow versus getting it at closing because you needed that $500,000 to balance your sources and uses. It's kind of a gap financing tool. Um, so that, uh, so after 15 years of the Green Bay Housing Authority would be 100% um, owner. I, I answered that, Cheryl, in a very long manner, and I apologize. <laughs> and then... Um... <clears throat> I think one thing we talked about was we wanted to make sure that we maintained our staff, our staffing. And this yeah. um, MOU will allow us to maintain our staffing. Um, yes. It sits today um, at Mason Men. And now that may change through retirements or people leaving or whatever. Um, but where we are today with our staff and our budget, we, we are able to maintain our staff, correct? Yes. Yes. Cheryl, that's ex thank you for bringing that up. So one of the one of the items that actually um, delayed our coming to you, the board, uh, for approval was because Cheryl wanted to make sure that their current operation was funded under this project, and it can be. Now there there is a caveat to that. Um, the answer of is the operating budget including, you know, all of Mason, uh, sorry, all of the Green Bay Housing Authority's uh, management expenses, kind of the way it is today and the way it's staffed today, covered under this project? Yes, period. The one thing that is different than what would be a conventional deal is under conventional deal, usually the payroll of the manager would be covered, okay, under the project, under payroll, then you would also have a 6% management fee that would be on top of that payroll, which is kind of cash in the kitty for the Green Bay Housing Authority, kind of unrestricted cash in project, which is a very nice fee. The, the, the staffing levels at the Green Bay Housing Authority at this point, in order to absorb them into the project as they are today, would require that the fee get transferred into the payroll line so that the entire payroll would be absorbed by the project and funded by the project. Um, as Cheryl indicated real quick before I started talking again, as if there is attrition in terms of staffing or any efficiencies that would occur um, as a result of that staffing going into the future or reduction or efficiencies, however you want to call it, that would be transferred into a property management fee that the GBHA would, would get to put in their pocket. Um, and, and that's not like you got to go reset the deal. The GBHA would always have a 6% management fee that is actually due to them from the project. It's just could they, the, the investor and the lender, WIDA, will not let you realize that fee if um, your payroll eats into that fee up to the amount of that fee, if you understand. So, you know, you can't just say what your payroll is, whatever it is, and then take your 6% fee, you know, Katie bar the door. You got to have kind of a, a, a budget for your payroll. This deal um, has a budget, which again, pays for all the payroll, but does not allow you currently to take a fee, but any efficiency or reduction in that payroll amount would allow you to grab that amount of fee, whatever reduced, whatever it's reduced. And that's over the 15 year time span, is it? Is it correct? Is it tethered to interest rates or cost of no. living? Or no, what? no, when, um, when we close this deal, your interest rate will be um, determined by WIDA at closing for 35 years, 35 year AM set interest rate in the bonds based on the bonds that were sold. If you will have a set interest rate, my gut is 
because the Federal Reserve keeps uh, raising interest rates. We're right now, uh, I, I'm sorry, in a deal I'm closing right now, the rate was 6.15% before the most recent hike. My gut is you're going to be around 6.5 to 6.75 when we close this deal. That will be your perm rate. In the uh, investor ownership component, does that uh, does that suggest you would likely only have one, or do you still have the capability of multiple investors? Does somebody manage that, or is it one human or entity uh, or uh, multiple? Great, great question. Um, uh, the reason that's such a good question is because we're in Wisconsin. <laughs> if we were in New York, I'd say one person, no questions asked. In Wisconsin, the demand is a little bit more limited. So right. sometimes you do, this is a big project. So you're, you're going to have to find a big gorilla to kind of take all of it. Our two options are probably Chase Bank and Sinair Equity Solutions. Uh, Sinair is a little more friendlier to a, um, to a public housing authority project that the public housing authority wants to take over in a, a, when it's stabilized. Chase would be more stringent in terms of liquidity, balance sheet, compliance, all of that. Sinair will be a little more flexible. So we're thinking of Sinair being the sole investor or Chase being the sole investor. I think we want to go that route with one investor. If you get two, then you end up um, negotiating uh, two what are called operating agreements, which are only about 153 pages each. And it'd be nice to just do one of them, you know? Yeah. So, so without that component completely understood, how do you get to the 1.15 like as opposed to a 1.2 or a 1.1 like where's where where's your debt income ratio coming from that yep. you're fixing it at 1.15 yeah so what's great about the public housing authority projects like this is your rents are set right your uh, let me let me back up your demand is off the charts number 1 number 2 your rents are set okay so your 1.15 is really not so much based on which equity provider you pick, either Chase or Scenario to buy your tax credits. It's more based on, like we talked about before, your operating expenses versus your revenue. So if I were to give you a 6% fee, but take all of the current payroll of GBHA, we would never hit a 1.15 you know, based on the revenue we know we're going to get and the expenses that we would be projecting. So that's why, that's why I'm saying like, it's, as, it's, is it right to see a zero sum game where like, you know, if your payroll is what it is today, you can't take a fee, but if it reduces, you can take a little bit of a fee based on that reduction because your, your ceiling is going to be what you can absorb as a fee to get to your 1.15. Do you understand? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a little complicated, but it, yeah. it's really it, th what I think about it is if I'm bringing in income, I have to make a dollar 15 of every income to every buck I spend. Okay. That's a 1.15. Right. I, I understand that. I'm just thinking about like, like what's the actual risk, right? You, I mean, you understand oh. that how fast we fill the place anyway, right? Like, right. Way to, you know, so, so what's, what's driving the 15% yep. as opposed to a 1.1? I, I mean. Oh, no, that, I see what you're saying. Uh, that's just <laughs> a standard, that's an industry standard. It, throughout the whole lie tech, uh, long-term housing tax credit industry, uh, an investor would never agree. Oh, and WIDA, I guess WIDA would never finance a below 1.15 deal. But you're right. The risk is like nothing. The only risk that you guys would have as you take over the project after stabilization is just your operating expenses. Right. It's just like it's like if your wages go up, if, you know, inflation keeps going up, you're going to maybe run into a problem because your income really is kind of capped, you know. It'll go your income will go up every year based on what they're called OCAF. 
and HUD increases, but uh, you know, it's, it's not like you can just set your rate. It's a HUD set rate. Any other questions? I apologize for the complexity. Um, do just through trying to understand what you said, can you clarify the nominal fee at the end of the 15 years? What, what does that actually mean? Yeah, it's, it's about, um, I think what we have is, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what the formula is. Maybe Paul would have a better idea of that, but um, I've always seen it uh, on an operating agreement that it, you know, it's $25,000 or something where you, 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 you have to have some kind of threshold for partnership law that allows you to exit the, you know, the 99.99% owner, and then you take a hundred percent of the deal. And it, it's a very, after the 15th year, nobody really cares because your tax credits are used up and uh, you know, you just, just got to get them out. So it, it's a nominal fee that is uh, that, that the housing authority would pay, which, which would be like in your budget, you know, you'd have like a reserve for it so that you would peg that amount right up front. And you just like pay it out of that reserve. That's it for me. Sorry, everyone. Great, great questions. Paul or Caitlin, do you have any comments with regards to this MOU? Cause I know you've both looked at it and worked us through some of those, some of the issues. And I've done a lot of talking and nobody really believes me. So anybody want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> it's like made up words, Ted. It's not your it's fault. Made, right. It's just legalese, you know. <laughs> well, I can go if you'd like me to. And, you know, I can, I, the, um, attorney at Hush Blackwell. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the one thing I would probably you know, mention is that of all the stuff kind of Ted walked through, which, which I'm sure is a lot to absorb, it's a very common structure and it is kind of the way things are done. So it's not like, oh, we're really out there on a limb doing something different. You have a investor who, who is the 99.99% owner because that's how they are able to claim tax credits. And that's why they put in a lot of equity and, and buy the tax credits because for the, the, you know, the, the period they claim tax credits and then when they're done, um, they will exit. And as Ted said, it's for a relatively nominal number. You know, it's gotta be a big enough number so that it doesn't look like um, it wasn't a real deal to begin with, if you will. So it's kind of set to where people are comfortable from a partnership tax standpoint that, okay, this is a, you know, arm's length deal and it wasn't some sort of, you know, grant or other sort of transaction. Um, you know, a couple other kind of just points that I might sort of uh, hit to maybe make things sound a little bit again more, you know, this is sort of the way it is. Um, you know, Ted talked about Gorman being a 51% owner of that managing member. And that's the entity that kind of controls the, uh, you know, the, the LLC, you know, even though you have the investor member who owns the big 99.99% chunk um, and they have certain consent rights, the day to day is kind of up to the managing member. Um, but even though, even though there's this 5149 split, if you look in section one of the agreement, We've got a pretty broad definition of major actions of things that the housing authority would have to sign off on, you know, approving sources and uses, the budget, the lender, you know, terms of the, the debt financing, terms of the equity investment, you know, the design of the improvements and the budget uh, and scope of work. So it's not like you're, because you're a 49% owner, you've kind of signed away the ability to uh, have input on these, these major items. So um, hopefully those two things kind of make you, make you feel a little bit more like, yeah, we, we kind of know what we're, what we're doing here, putting together this, this MOU. Um, you know, Ted, I think Ted mentioned, I mean, that essentially, I don't know if I, 
tell me if, if you disagree with this kind of position, but I think Gorman would want to be out of their role as the, um, you know, 51% owner, the managing member, pretty much as soon as they can in, in some respects, right? So we've got this concept of upon project stabilization, they're going to, you know, uh, um, be exiting and, and, you know, that's the concept we're looking at. I think what Ted alluded to, like with a chase, they might be more uh, saying, well, you know, in order to allow them to exit, we, we really got to feel comfortable with, you know, the housing authority's balance sheet or net worth or what have you. And so those are things that kind of all need to be fleshed out. And, right. you know, you, you'll see a lot of language in this MOU of uh, here's what we think are the general cons, general outline of the guarantees, but any actual guarantees that we sign up with the investor and the lender need to be acceptable to Gorman and the housing authority. And right. kind of the same thing with the 150 page operating agreement, you know, um, the investor is going to drive a lot of that. Every, everybody's got to be able to really sign off on that. So this is really kind of trying to set forth, you know, so that we don't start going real far down the path with the investor. And then we realize that we didn't kind of have a, an understanding between our developer and us. So it's really trying to say, hey, here's the outline of how we're, we're looking at this. We all realize we've got to get a lender happy and we've got to get an investor happy. Um, right. Yep. And, and this is similar to other MOUs that I've worked on with other developers um, for other housing authorities. I mean, conceptually speaking. So if that gives you some comfort that we're not kind of out there on a limb doing something, you know, groundbreaking here, we're not trying to be, to be, uh, you know, reinventing the wheel here. So that's my slightly lower than 50,000 foot overview. And I'm happy to go over any particular clauses if you'd like, but don't want to kind of bore you unnecessarily unless you want to talk about stuff. Uh, are there pre-deal costs? And whose uh, are they? Yeah, um, there are. Um, Paul, I don't have the document in front of me. I know we have a provision in there. Yep, it's section nine if you're, if you're looking at the document. Um, and it, 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 it essentially talks about us, you know, needing to agree upon a budget of pre-development costs. Um, Ted, I think you're, you know, it talks about Gorman arranges financing for any pre-development costs other than authority legal fees. Um, you know, we're, um, we're not to go out and, uh, and kind of start, um, I think the key here is communication between the two parties on starting to incur pre-development costs and making sure that we're all in agreement with what we're doing. And Correct. And, and, and I'll just tell you what the status of that is. So what we usually typically do is take impact seven, who is the CDFI in Northern Wisconsin, and they, they do a lot of affordable housing and um, kind of gap financing. Uh, they do all of our pre-development loans. Uh, we would get a, um, you know, I'd say probably the pre-development on this deal will probably approach $400,000. Uh, we will get a $400,000 line of credit from impact seven uh and then we'll have a budget that we kind of all agree to you guys will be a part of that and then we'll kind of both as partners agree to take that loan out um and then it will be you know if you guys terminate um you know i i, I don't know there's there's a um there's a formula in there that paul and i agree to and be, be honest with you i apologize it was a month ago or so it was before thanksgiving i can't exactly remember how we ended up but the you know if we terminate you know we take all of it if you terminate you take you know some of it and if we both agree we split it 50 50 or something like that that's usually the way it goes but it's not a big it's not a small number i mean it's it's a we start so you, so you, you gotten, just referenced 
you just referenced yeah. four hundred thousand dollars. Is that eight hundred total for fifty percent on both sides? No, no, no. It'd be four hundred. It'd be four hundred total, and then we'd split that. Total. So, yeah. so the housing authority is putting two hundred thousand dollars pre-development deal up. Yeah, they're they're signing on that line for the two hundred. Correct. Okay. Uh, we would probably spend it all, but it would be consistent with the budget that we all agreed upon. Yeah, and that's that's all communicated before reimbursement regardless correct yep okay sorry thank you any um, other questions to, anything uh, well we have this we have the um the seller's note letter that was also executed um i think that's part of the approval as well yeah, and Cheryl, that is, um, Paul, I'm sorry, do you have the number that was in there? I, I just don't have it with me, the exact the number. Of 16 million. 16 million, okay. So let's just use that number. The 16 million represents the value. We literally got an appraisal. Uh, I think, Cheryl, I'll give it to you, but uh, it's an appraisal of someone who actually appraised Mason Manor as is and the scattered sites as is. Um, that is the requirement where we need an appraisal. Then we take that number of 16 million, the Green Bay Housing Authority would in a sense contribute the uh, scattered sites and Mason Manor into the deal for the appraised amount. And then we get tax credits called basis part of our basis that, that computes how many how much tax credits we get, that 16 million would be part of our basis, which is like free money, because really, you know, the transfer of the asset by paper may go into a new LLC, but really nothing really changes. Um, but we get the, the benefit of the $16 million on the seller note. Then after, um, that is some more security for GBHA to kind of retain the, the asset, right? They're always gonna have uh, a seller note uh, on the property for $16 million. So nobody's gonna do anything with that asset without GBHA being right in the middle of it. So that's a good thing, gives us free money. And that was uh, part integral part of the deal, <clears throat> but you need to approve it obviously because you're GBHA and you can't give a seller note unless you approve it. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions for Paul or Ted? I got one more. Sorry, they just keep coming in, Bill. Sorry, man. Oh, no, it's great. That's, That's all great right. Question. Uh, on the actual construction, uh, will you have damages or a damages clause, and who's responsible for them if you're WIDA funded? Yeah, so we will have a, um, a general contractor contract that yep. will be from Gorman and Company. Um, sorry, Gorman General Contractors LLC to the project, and then the project, which will be you know fifty one forty nine, um, and then the investor will all agree on this contract and sign it together. And then that'll be kind of the budget with the contingency all in it. Uh, and then there will be damages on both sides. You know, I mean, if you guys, if the project terminates, there'll be damages. If we go over, we got to pay for it. We'll have a completion guarantee. So it will be a real kind of third party deal, but it is, uh, we are vertically integrated. So that just like the architect contract, it'll be the exact same thing with Gorman Architects with the project. So it'll be all third kind of third party, uh, the investor, the bank, WIDA, and you guys with your counsel, uh, you know, they all sign off in the terms of that. So it's market rate stuff. Okay. So, so when we are seeing the construction coming to a close and it's time to start planning for populating rooms and then we miss the deadline on construction. That's who, our problem. That's yep. our problem. Okay. Yeah. Gorman, Gorman general contractors. Yep. And then, you know, it's Gorman. So, you know, yeah. Buck stops here. Yeah. Okay. And just so you guys know, we, we will vacate two floors. We will 
fit two floors, then move one floor back in, do the next floor, then move that floor back in. Then we'll go floor by floor, like a rolling rehab. So it's not like it's complete and everybody moves in. It's like it's a rolling rehab. Yeah, just so you know. Yeah, so you're, you're at worst case scenario, one seventh, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, that's it. Sorry. Sorry, Cheryl. Looks oh, awesome. Those are, good. those are good questions. Good questions. Thank you. All right. Anything further? Otherwise, uh, we would need a motion to close the floor. Do we have that motion? I'll make that motion. All right. Is there I'll a second? second I'll second that. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the floor. Uh, anything further? Otherwise, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Any, any opposed? Hearing none, the floor is closed. Uh, Ted, Paul, thank you very much for your information on all this, and we will move forward. Thank you so much, and thanks for your time. Really oh, appreciate it in this holiday wait. season. Oh, wait. Yep. You guys are going to hang around for our next meeting, right? Um, okay. What's the so next? We, I'm sorry. So we have Green Bay Properties. We have Green Bay Housing Authority Properties 1, Inc., who has to oh. take the same vote. Oh, which is got, a it, got it. entity. So. Got it. Okay. Hang on. Well, we can finish up this meeting. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bill. I didn't want them Hi. to leave. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. All right. So um, we we had the explanation for the uh, memorandum of understanding and the seller's note uh, uh, <coughs> letter um, that we need to approve. Uh, so I you know, they're really kind of two separate items here, but they're obviously interrelated. So. Uh, do we need to, uh, I think we need to approve them separately rather than as one vote, uh, unless somebody has any other thoughts on that, but I would uh, make a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding. Uh, is there a second? I will second that. All right, we have a motion, a second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We've got the seller's uh, note letter, uh, and I would uh, make the motion to approve that. Uh, I will second that. And we have a second as well. Uh, any further discussion on the uh, letter? With nope. Gorman and company. Uh, no. Nothing further than all in favor of uh, approval signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries. All right, uh, anything further on this before we move to the informational? Uh, hearing none, then we'll move to informational and item number one is GBHA bills. Stephanie. All right, those were sent out with the packet. Those were for October and November. There was nothing new, fun or exciting in them. Um, does anybody no. have any questions? Nope. All right. All right. Then we'll move on to the financial report. That was also in your packet. Um, we are fast approaching the end of the year, which marks our halfway point. Um, we're doing just fine right now. No massive things to be worried about. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions for Stephanie? All right, uh, hearing none, then we'll move on to item number three, uh, the Langen report, and that's in your packet, so. Any questions on the Langen report? Sure. All right, hearing none, then we'll move on to the director's report. So I just want to say before um, we move to the next meeting, I just wanted to thank um, Attorney Dombrowski, Ted, Caitlin, your teams um, on working on this to bring this to this board meeting. <laughs> There's been a lot of questions, a lot of emails, a lot of data um, shared with, with getting us to this point. So, and also I want to just thank the board for making this special meeting so we could get this approved before the end of the year. 
That being said, we have a number of housing developments. I can report those out in January. Um, that's moving forward in Green Bay. It's a good time. I think Ted's working on one of them on military. So um, we've got some affordable housing in the hopper, which is good. Great. That's all I've got. All right. Uh, then we have number five, the occupant. All right, I think that's in your packet. Um, from Mason Manor, we are moving along. <laughs> we have successfully, at the end of this month, we'll have a full floor for Ted and his team. Um, and we do have a few more projected to be moving out in the beginning of the year. So we're doing good on our vacancies. Fantastic. Yeah, great job great. emptying the place, Jamie. That's, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a hard like, <laughs> yay, but not like. It's it's actually oh, in, pu in, in in public housing. It's actually harder sometimes to vacate than it is to fill up. Yes, right. I have yes. I wholeheartedly agree with that based on our COVID restrictions over the last two and a half years. Um, but I can like say two of our tenants that, yep, two of the of our tenants that were in Mason Manor are now in our scattered sites. So um, I see the transition from like a one bedroom apartment family um, to a more of a family housing two bedroom unit. So we are making, not everybody is leaving with their own choice or they are choice, but they are moving to somewhere better. So that's really cool for us. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you, Jamie. Um, any questions on the accuracy report? All right, any other issues for this meeting before we uh, uh, move to adjournment? All right, just uh, item number six for reference, the date of the next meeting is January 19th. Uh, hopefully we'll all be available on that date um, and we don't have to schedule another special meeting. Um, all right, so we're ready for adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll motion that. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, we have a meeting before we uh, move over to the uh, property one uh, uh, meeting. Uh, all in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, we will 